Hello everyone, welcome back to another video, but today it's not on the Mini, although it's not finished yet. I've decided to start another project. It's to do with this ear, you can just about see, and this ear in this box, which I shall show you in a minute. Exciting. I like new projects before I finish the last one. So what have I got in this box? I'll open it up and show you. I've got a plastic bag and a massive turbo. This is very exciting, isn't it? So I bought this turbo and uh, this engine. Can you see it down here? I'll move the camera so you can see it. This is a Volvo B230 for my 940 that I'm going to build with that turbo and various other bits and pieces to have a bit more fun. So we'll jump into it and I'll show you a little bit more about what I'm doing. So you can get a closer look. This is the engine I've bought. As you can see, the balls are in really nice condition. There's no detectable wear. It's not been machined. It's just been honed. So I think this engine's been out of a car for a number of years. It's a stamped on the block down here. It's a 1985 block. Uh, which in red block terms does mean one thing it's got smaller main bearings than the later engines i've sprayed that with wd-40 to keep it nice the laters have got a much bigger main so they're allegedly a stronger crank but there's not loads of pre-88 cranks that have been smashed is there so this is the crankshaft this is the auxiliary shaft a couple of end covers and an oil pump those are the end covers that came with this engine <coughs> They're in a bit of a state, they'll clean up. And that's a sump, that sump's too rusty, I'm not going to use that. And I've got another sump there. I bought a load of other, well, I bought another complete engine that I've used, that I'm going to use things like those two covers off. Um, I am going to buy a brand new oil pump. This here, in this box, is a KL Racing T4 camshaft. It's a little bit over the top, but there we go. Got a few other bits and pieces that ready for the bin, an old power steering pump that's no good, a water pump that's no good, I've got a valve cover. See this pile of bits here came with a separate engine, I've bought two engines. So I've got an inlet manifold that's in reasonable condition and I've got a cylinder head. I'm going to have a look and do a bit of uh, research and understanding on some porting, see what I can do with that. Might as well have a go since it's all in bits. Um, I do have an awful lot of bits and pieces left to buy for building this up, but I made a start painting it. I've got a bit of paint to clean off here and there. It's dripped and run over surfaces that I could do without it being on. So the plan is for this is that I'll get the block built up. I'll, the crank's ready to go. The previous owner worked at um, an engine overhaul facility, so he's machine. He's sorry, not machine. So he's polished all of the journals on the crank and on the auxiliary shaft. So they're, they're good to go. We don't have any bearings yet for the engine block. I've got a set of pistons and rods. These are the original pistons, uh, which have come with brand new uh, piston rings. So I've just got to go through those piston rings and check the ring gaps and make sure they're all good in each bore. And I'll label the packets up so I know which one they, they go for. Um, I'm not going to use those comrades, those comrades will bend very easily with a big turbo like that uh, blowing at it. So I've got to order some H-beam comrades, I'm probably going to get them from Classic Swede. Uh, and I have also want to get some ARP uh, main fixings. So until I get any ARP mains, the block's just going to have to sit there as it is. Let me uh, have a look at turning it over. Until I get the ARPs, it's just going to have to sit as it is. Oh, I can't go that way around. I need to go the other way. Um, without any bearings in. So I've got a little bit of cleaning up to do this side of it. You can just see where a bit of water's got, where it's been sat. Clean up all this surface here. Um, each of the caps are, are numbered. So, yeah, I've got a bit of work to do cleaning up. Once I get the ARP mains, I can get some bearings, get that crankshaft fitted in. Got the two end covers on with new seals in and uh, i also want to get a new oil pump to go on here uh, as well but yeah a bit of work to do yet with the block but it's a good starting point isn't it and something else i'm going to show you that i've got 
to go with this is uh, to do with the management engine management side of things. Now I've had a little look at the engine. Um, I'm going to move on to making some measurements now. I've got a fair few measurements to make. Um, I want to confirm the bore sizes because there doesn't appear to be any wear in the bore. And I want to uh, confirm the ring gaps, measure the ring gaps. So we'll see. We'll do that now. I'll get the GoPro set up and we'll go through those. Bit of a time lapse. So I've just been through um, a load of measurements on the block. I've measured the bore to confirm it's 96 millimeters and I've measured the ring gaps. Now, these boxes of piston rings came with the engine uh, as brand new rings. Three boxes, three cylinders worth look brand new, one don't. So I've put them in the bore and I've taken some measurements from a couple of different locations. I've spoken to friends about it and the right place to take the measurements. And they're measuring 26 and 27 thousandths of an inch uh, gap which looking at the specs I can find online I need to dig out my Haynes manual to see if there's any specs in there but uh, I found a website called KG trimming which is a Swedish uh, Volvo tuning website they sell all sorts of bits they sell the camshafts that I've got down there uh, and they recommend between 11 thou and 22 thou of uh, ring gap so my gaps are looking a little bit big I did speak to some friends what their opinions are and the uh, they came back to say they're a little bit big. So I'm going to do a little bit more work and a little bit of uh, playing around, um, working out what's going on. One box of the rings, as I said before, appears to be used. So they're not the right size. I measured those at 35 thou. So they do, you can see heat marks on them and whatnot. So obviously for whatever reason, one set of rings has got displaced and some used ones in the box. So. I do need to order one set of rings. So I'm gonna order one cylinder's worth of rings, measure those, see how they measure up. And if they measure up slightly smaller gap, then I'll order another three cylinders worth. Perhaps the previous owner had gapped these rings. They were all, the packets were all open, so just don't know. But from the measurements I've just taken in the bore, the bores measure 96 millimeters exactly, so they should be fine. I haven't got a fancy dial bore gauge, but using the using the telescopic bore gauges and then a, a vernier, I was able to measure them. So I'll, uh, I'll have to order up a set of rings and see how they go. <laughs> 